This is the United Kingdom Court of Appeals. It is the battleground of the finest legal minds in the world. This chap here is the most popular. He has been hired 41 times in three years. He has a 60% win rate. He's not a bad barrister, but he's not the best. This chap is best. He has seven straight wins. <coughs> Crazy thing, though, is when Mr. Popular isn't available, the major law firms like to hire these three monkeys down here. <laughs> these guys, the second, third, and fifth most popular barristers in the UK Court of Appeals have win rates in the 20s. <coughs> You're better off representing yourself because, pro se, get 42% <laughs> in this court. The number one reason why a barrister is not rehired is he failed to get on with the instructing solicitor. So what this happens, results in compounding over the years, is that the UK legal system is one big hire your mates network. And they don't keep track of how often people win or lose. You would be staggered by the number of lawyers who would have told me that winning isn't important. <laughs> Clients like it, but uh, <laughs> billing is important. Because of this, UK law firm's choice of barrister is actually 38% worse than random. And uh, major companies, general counsel's choice of law firm is 18% worse than random. So we're from Premonition. We are now the world's largest litigation database. We are bigger than LexisNexis, Thomson Reuters, and Bloomberg combined. The reason we've been able to do that is because most court data is actually down at a lower state level. This is America here. In the UK, we deal with just under 4,000 cases a year. In America, we deal with 41,000 cases every day. It's a sickening amount of litigation. 95% of the world's lawsuits are filed by 5% of the world's population. <laughs> we have 3,124 circuit courts here, and they're not connected. If you do something naughty in Miami, they have no idea about it in Orlando. So what we have is we have a, a scraping system that basically visits every court website every hour, goes and checks on all the new cases, and puts them in one place. We are one of the biggest scraping outfits in the world now. We're hitting 47,000 cases an hour, and we have some days we will download over a million cases in a day. Premonition is actually the largest individual user of VPNs on the planet. Uh, there's not a single VPN that can handle all of our traffic. And in the sleepy and antiquated world of legal tech, we've had a near Kardashian amount of hype. <laughs> had over 100 uh, articles and TV appearances in the three years that we've been around. These are the 20 largest law firms in Florida, and this is their performance in the Miami market. We've redacted a couple of the names here just because we didn't really want to get sued. <laughs> we have uh, a very impressive firm here, I'll, I'll mention because they're great, uh, it's Quinteros. They have a 93.51% success rate. Most of these firms have no bar here because they're not in the Miami courts. Apart from this one, they have no bar because their win rate is zero. <laughs> so what's that? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> they have a reputation though as being absolutely tippy top, best of the best. Most of the lawyers in Miami think these guys are it. This is the busiest law firm in Miami, and these are the individual lawyers. So they have this guy who has always won in the last three years, this guy who has always lost, these three who nearly always lose. <laughs> and you see, in the firm, it's practically random. 
who they happen to assign to you, who happens to be sitting on the bench that day, that decides whether you get a winner or a loser. And if you ask a law firm, what's the win rate of my lawyer, they'll look at you blankly because they have no idea. So what kind of things can we tell about a lawyer? This guy is the second busiest in Miami. He's done over 1,500 cases in three years. He does plaintiff foreclosure work for banks. He does a lot of them. It's basically a foreclosure mill is what he runs here. He's fast and he gets a judgment 41% of the time. So if justice is truly blind, he should be about 41% before every judge. Let's take a look. Judge Trarick here, 48%. Yeah, that's pretty close. Judge Bloom, 62%. Judge Bloom obviously likes him. Judge Ike here, it's 23%, obviously has a different opinion. You shouldn't see a 40% spread between judges on the same kind of facts over and over and over and over. But you do, because 30.7% of the average case is the relationship with the judge and the lawyer. It's very important that you pick a lawyer that your judge likes. This is something else that we found interesting. These are his clients. So he works for the banks. We see how many cases he's done. We see how long they last. And then we see their outcomes. And I could never figure out why he was winning 85% of his cases for beneficial. Whereas there's another bank, which is not on this list, called One West, and he was winning 16% of their cases. And I had all kinds of stupid theories as to why this might be the case. Till one day, I had a foreclosure attorney come in the office. He said, I'll tell you exactly why this is. These beneficial cases are beautiful. You can't lose them. There's a solid chain of title, they have all their documents, the client's very responsive, you can't lose. The One West cases are a horror show. There's a very weak chain of title. They've lost, um, uh, get to that, uh, well basically, um, <laughs> we'll get to that later if you don't mind. Uh, okay, time's coming up, so it'll have to be later. The One West cases, you can't win them. They have a very weak chain of title, they've lost most of the documentation, their legal department is run by monkeys, and I'm surprised you're getting a 16% win rate, those are probably default judgments. A little light bulb went off in my head, I thought, you know, we know who's gonna win these cases before the judge swings the gavel. We know before that hits the balance sheet, we know before earnings are reported to the stock market. I wonder, if we bought a basket of the best performers and we sold a basket of the worst performers, if we would get a perfect match trade and we could learn the stock market by reading the courts. But that's a story for another time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, Peggy.